Today's show is going to be a review of the Meitner preamplifier. Now, Meitner, in case you don't know, they're, they're kind of a low profile company. Meitner is a Canadian company. They have designed and built all of their products in Canada, and they've been doing this for a really long time. Matter of fact, Ed, Ed Meitner, the founder and chief engineer, was designing recording studio consoles back in the 1970s, and he did later on uh, pioneering work in DSD. His client list, I'm going to put it on the screen, is super impressive. Abbey Road, Bruce Botnick, the Doors recording engineer, Bob Ludwig, the mastering engineer, uh, the list goes on and on. So he's got some, some cred there, I think. I definitely think so. And by the way, and I owned one of his early preamplifiers, the PA6 in the 1980s. I'm gonna put up a picture of what that looks like. They were so beautiful. They came in mahogany cases. Oh, just gorgeous stuff. My, my first impressions of the Meitner preamp sound was that it wasn't really my kind of sound. It was incredibly neutral and uncolored and accurate. Now, I actually like preamps that are colored and have some character to them. So this sound of the Meitner Pre wasn't really, let's say, my bag. <laughs> but that doesn't mean I'm not going to re review it and talk about it, which is, after all, what I'm doing right now. So the reason I say it's neutral and accurate is I'm playing recordings at first of uh, Chesky sessions that I was either working at or present at. And I'm playing these two, two uh, CDs and I'm thinking, this sounds right. This sounds more, more like my memories of being there. Now, memory isn't the most, pardon the expression, accurate way of judging. But it, let me put it this way. I had that feeling. It made me feel like this is more truthful about the sound of these recordings than I'm usually hearing. Yeah, that was, that's where it was really getting interesting for me because like, yeah, it's not really my sound, but it is a really, really good sound. There is no doubt about it. There will be an audiophiliac viewer system of the day later on in today's show. But as for the details of the design, Oh, but wait, I, I, oh, one other thing about the sound that struck me after a few days of living with the Meitner Pre is how quiet it was. You know, the, the absence is not the thing that jumps out at first, but yes, how quiet it was. And even when I switched inputs or hit, went in and out of mute, no pops, no noise, no nothing, just really, really quiet. And even when I put my ear right up to the speakers, nope. This thing does not make any sound of its own. Very, very impressive. Now, part of the reason this is so is because the switching is all, as Ed describes it, contactless. There's no mechanical switches or relays or anything. All the switching is electronic. Now, the signal path is 100% analog. I will show you a picture of the interior of the chassis right now. The other thing that you could say right away about this design is that it is rather minimalist in terms of, let's say, user features, right? It only has three sets of inputs, two RCA, one XLR, that's it. <laughs> and it only has two outputs, one RCA, one XLR, and you can use both at the same time, meaning if you also want to drive an, and drive an amplifier and also a subwoofer, that's how you use both of those outputs. Now, I will mention that the chassis is beautifully crafted, gorgeous. Uh, the display is, is large and easy to read. The volume control, well, the volume knob feel, the knob itself feels great. Now, I will say that when you turn it, it doesn't have that kind of silky smooth knob feel. No, it just turns. <laughs> it doesn't feel cheap or weird or anything. It just doesn't have that silky smooth feel that I crave. But I can live with that. The remote is metal and uh, it is minimalist and there's nothing fancy or particularly luxurious about it. But it does have, well, it does have balance control, left, right balance control, which isn't the most common feature on high end preamps. And something I've never seen before, it actually has volume presets. You can preset the volume in three levels for each input. So rather than hunting back and forth, you can just go immediately to those inputs, uh, those input levels, A, B, C. Pretty cool. 
Hey, let's take a look at the specifications, and I will note that the most important specification of all, <laughs> the price, is $7,500. The Meitner preamplifier is covered with a three-year warranty. Now, you may have noticed <laughs> that up to this point, I did not talk about an internal DAC or phono stage, and that's because they don't exist. This is a 100% line stage preamplifier, which is the way I like to roll. I don't want to use the company's built-in, off-the-rack, chipset, whatever, DAC. It's not of interest to me, and same for phono stages. You can usually do a lot better by going outside and buying your own. Pick your own phono stage, pick your own DAC, and be done with it. And that's, that's what I recommend, especially when you're buying a preamplifier at this price range. The listening session started with this album on LP, the MoFi Pressing, the Allman Brothers first record. And yeah, I know it's not the best sounding record. It's kind of grainy. It's kind of coarse. That has nothing to do with the MoFi remastering. It's just the way it does sound. It is kind of compressed. But the music is so good. And Greg Allman's voice was so strong, so soulful. Of course, his brother Dwayne on guitar, the rhythm section, all of that was extraordinary. And the rest of the system at this point was the Pass XA25 power amp, and the speakers were the Pure Audio Project Duet 15s. And I was playing it pretty loud and just reveling in the sound. I was off to a really, really, really good start. Meaning that I, I wanted to start with kind of a challenge to the preamp, like would this preamp be unmerciful in its revealing the inadequacies of this recording? And no, I was, I was good. I had no problem with that. For, for a change of venue, I went with this one. This is a duet recording with Yo-Yo Ma and Catherine Scott. Uh, Catherine is on piano. Yo-Yo Ma is, of course, on cello. It was recorded in a concert hall. I forget the name. They were seated next to each other. Uh, there were no headphone mixes, no nothing, just the sound of two people playing in a beautiful acoustic space. And the tonality of this recording, of the piano and the cello, were just so un -hi fi like That's it. They did not sound in any way forward or exaggerated or hyper detailed, it just sounded like real music, or as close as you could get to real music when playing a recording. And this is this one is streaming, by the way. So continuing, uh, I'm playing a lot of different things, and oh, and I switched over to the Eminent Technology LFT8B Planner Magnetic speakers, and I'm playing some mono recordings. And I'm sorry, I forgot to write down which ones they were, but I'm playing mono. And I'm thinking, it's just so right down the middle, there was space, there was depth. I'm not a big mono guy. I don't really get why people are into mono. But in these particular sessions, I fully was there. Because I wasn't thinking that the sound was too crowded and narrow in that one little spot. No, it definitely had some spaciousness to it. It was, it was really, really beautiful. So, yeah, again, this preamplifier just lets the music pass. I think that's the... I think that's the idea here, and I think it's doing it very, very well. Staying with the Eminent Technology speakers, but using the NAD M23 power amp, I was playing uh, Pink Floyd's second album, A Saucer Full of Secrets, in stereo. Oh, and I was going to compare the Meitner Pre with the Linear Tube Audio preamplifier. Now, the, it is a tube preamp, that one is. But it doesn't sound particularly tubey or soft or rich or romantic or any of those things. It's a pretty neutral sounding preamp for a two preamp. But this one, the Meitner Pre, was in a different league. The, the edge definition, the speed, the transients, the treble airiness was far better on the Meitner Pre than the LTA. Uh, same for bass definition and all that, definitely better. But it was the, the sense of speed of getting out of the way of clarity was significantly better on the Meitner Pre. Now, of course, the other way of looking at this is that the Linear Tube Audio 2 preamplifier was warmer and richer and had more meat on the bones kind of sound, more flesh to it, more body, and that the Meitner preamplifier was leaner and cooler in tonal balance. You know, and again, I'm surprised that usually that would tilt the balance for me as to what I would prefer 
towards the linear tube audio. But in this case, I like them both equally just doing different things. Maybe, maybe I'm overstating how big the difference is, but it was definitely obvious. Um, but it was that hearing into the recording, the clarity, that sense of space and air and all that stuff going on in the Meitner Pre that was really, really good. Then I kept everything the same except I swapped out the linear tube audio preamp for the Pass Labs XP30. And right away, the Pass's bottom end had more fullness, more bass going on from the mid bass down from the Pass preamp than the LTA or the Meitner preamplifiers. It was less airy on top, certainly, than the, than the Meitner and mm, no, similar to, similar but different to the linear tube audio preamplifier. But it was the tonal balance difference and just maybe a little bit more push, more, more sock to the sound, more dynamic kick going on with the pass than the other two preamplifiers. I wanted to change things up yet again, took out the eminent technology speaker, in went the Pure Audio Project speakers, and I played, and I used the NAD M23 power amplifier, and I played this recording. It's on the, the label is called MA Recordings, and I will link to this specific title on their website. It's a CD only. I don't think you can stream it. And it's an album by Michael Goddard. And the instrument on the cover, that's a real instrument, is called the Serpent. <laughs> and it has a sound that goes down to the center of the earth. Or at least you feel that way when you listen to it. It's very mm, sound. It's deep. It is very deep and resonant. And I'm thinking that the, uh, the Meitner preamplifier can just unravel that deep, what is it, sonorous tone, that deep, deep tone so well. The textures, all the information that's going on way down there. There's a big bass sound on this recording, a bass drum, and it's one of those. Oh yeah, <laughs> this is the good stuff. Like I said up front, I'm not particularly hung up on maximum resolution and clarity. It's not really my thing, although that started to change <laughs> when I reviewed the Eminent Technology speaker. But even, again, taking it even further with this combination, uh, yeah, this is good. This is just that, that feeling that you're getting more out of the recording. Just I'm getting more music, more information, more of what went down at the recording session itself, which was being an MA recording, live to two track, no dynamic range compression, no equalization, none of that artificial ingredients, just the real deal. Next up was another MA recording, Sara Una Noche. It's uh, what Todd Garfinkel, the recording engineer, calls uh, not normal tango music, <laughs> recorded in Argentina near Buenos Aires and live to two track, no compression, none of that stuff. And I'm using the Meitner preamplifier, NAD M23, and the Pure Audio Project speakers. And the sound stage was just gigantic and big and tall, really much higher than the actual speakers. And I'm thinking, that is extraordinary. And the dynamics and the shading of all these instruments, really, really beautiful. And then when I switch back to the linear tube audio preamp, the sound stage shrank. It definitely got smaller, height, depth, all that got a little tighter. Not a lot. I'm not saying that the LTA was top liver or anything, just it didn't do that thing that the Meitner preamp did so well. So then I switched over to the, the XP30, the past XP30 preamp, and you know, it is kind of in the middle. It has some of the qualities that you get from the Meitner, some of the qualities of the LTA, it's more like the Meitner than the LTA, but it is kind of an in-between. Looking back, it seems like a lot of my listening sessions were done with the NAD M23 partnered with the Meitner Pre. They just seem like a natural combination, but when I use the Pass Labs XA25 power amplifier with the Pure Audio Project speakers, you know, that amp, the XA25, is a fleshier sounding amplifier uh, than the NAD, and I really like that. I like that combination a lot. So I don't mean to shortchange the past XA25's partnering with the Meitner. I just didn't take as many notes for some reason when I was doing those listening sessions. But that combination was truly stellar. Okay, I think we're ready for it. So Steve, what do you really think of the Meitner Pre 
or pre-amplifier, uh, uh, I was surprised. I was surprised because it, it, it's doing a thing that I'm not drawn to. Although maybe I'm starting to change. Maybe I'm having a, a midlife or post-midlife crisis because now I'm finding more and more to like about high resolution audio, higher than normal for me. So that was kind of nice, you know. Um, yeah, a lot of that was with the uh, Eminent Technology LFT 8B speakers, which are massively clear, beautiful, gorgeous sounding speakers, which again, that, that review surprised me. And here we are pairing these two guys together, the Meitner and the Eminent. And it's like, yeah, I'm digging this. I'm really digging this. So yeah, it was a very pleasant surprise. I was enthralled by the sound of this preamplifier. Really, really nice. Um, you know, and I think part of the reason it works so well is because there's an effortlessness to that hyper clarity. It doesn't feel push, it doesn't feel forward, it's not aggressive, it just is. Yeah, that's it. And, and like I said, when I was listening to the Allman Brothers album, not a great recording, uh, no, I wasn't cringing <laughs> at all, I was just... I was just in the mix. Saucer full of secrets? Yeah, that's the good stuff, you know. I like early Pink Floyd way better than later Pink Floyd. But that's just my taste. And that's all it ever is. We're always talking about what you like, what in this case, what I like, my taste. Everybody's tastes different. So to say that one is better than the other, it's not really fair. But for me, early Pink Floyd is way better than later Pink Floyd. Okay, so now we are ready for that extra special time, that magical time for the Audiophiliac Viewer System of the Day. This is Martin's desktop system, and he lives in Malaysia. The speakers are the latest addition to the system. Those are Dyn Audio Emit 10s. The amplifier is a name Unity Atom HE, and there's also an SMSL DA9, Danafrep's Iris, that's the DAC, and the headphones are Hi-Fi Man Aria. Thank you, Martin. Okay, we are back. My name is Steve Guttenberg, and it's true, I am the Audiophiliac. Yeah, if you like what I'm doing here on the channel with reviews, with interviews with my buddy Herb and other people, Audiophiliac viewer systems, thought pieces, please consider joining and contributing to my Patreon. It's super easy to do. It's not expensive. Uh, Patreon accepts payment in dollars, pounds, euros, and other currencies. You can join for a wee bit, month or two, three, four, or years, like some people do. Whatever suits you, it's all good. It's all gladly accepted by me. So that's it. And if you just like a given video, please remember to hit the like button. And if you have yet to subscribe, please do so. And with that, I can say my work here is at last complete. Thank you so much for watching. And I really, really do hope to see you back here again very, very soon.